All right, what is up, everybody? Hustle Millennial here, coming at you with episode three of selling books on Amazon. Now, we started this series because we've been showing you guys this journey for over a year now of us literally walking out of our jobs uh, right after we bought a house, actually, and going right into full-time reselling. We started with retail arbitrage, we still do some online arbitrage, and we're just getting into private label. But that doesn't change the fact that the staple of our business and the majority of our money comes from selling books. Now, in episode three, as promised in episode two, we are going to do one of the most highly asked questions that we get. That is, should this book right here be fulfilled by Amazon or fulfilled by merchant? So first off, some of the terms you may hear is FBM or MF. Now that stands for fulfilled by merchant or merchant fulfilled. Same thing, just a couple of different ways of saying it. And there's FBA as well, which is the flip side. It's the other side of the coin that's fulfilled by Amazon. That means I don't interact with the customer. I send this book to Amazon. Amazon fulfills it, sends it out. Now, breaking those two down a little bit more, when I get a book, if we do Merchant Fulfilled, that means we have to go get the book, we have to list the book, we have to store the book, and then when the book is sold, we then have to do all the packaging, we print the label, and we physically go, put it in the mailbox, hand it to the postman, um, and send it out that way. On the flip side of the coin, with Fulfilled by Amazon, we usually do 30 books at a time because of the 30 up labels. We will go pick the books, scan the books in, put 30 of them in a box, and ship it off to Amazon. We don't have to worry about it after that. Amazon will then fulfill the customer's needs um, by getting the book from their warehouse, shipping it to the customer, and if any returns or anything like that goes down, goes back into Amazon inventory uh, for them to then handle it all over again. So fulfilled by Amazon right off the bat sounds like the easiest way to do things because it's a lot less work. And if you're going through 500, upwards of 1,000, sometimes 1,500 books a week like we are, fulfilled by Amazon starts to look very, very nice. Because of some of the obvious things, storing all those books, we just have our home, we store everything in our basement, about 700 square feet down there is inventory, inventory, and again, inventory. If you don't have a space like that, fulfilled by Amazon may be the way you have to go until you build up enough um, income, until you build up enough revenue to possibly rent a storage unit, which you can find, you know, a reasonable storage unit for maybe 30 bucks a month. You can put some shelving up in there and then you can do Merchant Fulfilled from there. But if you do have the space, Merchant Fulfilled on the other side of that coin means you do actually make more money. And this is where we get into it. Honestly, when it comes to MF versus FBA, it comes down to how much money can I make. At the end of the day, that's what matters. Two things matter, a happy customer and making the maximum amount of money that you can on a book. Now you're more than welcome to look this book up. This book has been uh, top 100 bestsellers ranked for a couple months now. It's currently sitting at 46. Being such a low rank, it can fluctuate, um, but 46 was what it was at literally last night when I looked it up. So right now, I can sell this book for $17 via FBA. That means if I send this book into Amazon, it may take about two weeks for it to actually get into the inventory, but when all is said and done, I can sell it for $17. Now, we paid $2 for this book, which $2 into 17, that sounds like a heck of a return. You're not gonna find that return if you're uh, say just doing the stocks every day. If you're a stock market trader, $2 into 17, that is an incredible return. You don't see a $2 stock jump to 17 all the time. Very rarely, actually. Maybe um, a couple of stocks a, a day will have that kind of move. In the vast majority of things, that is a needle in a haystack to actually find it. There is a way to scan for those things, but that's for another video, that's for another series. Uh, which we may do in the future, actually, a stock trading series would be good for people, kind of a beginner's introduction to stocks. Um, but Merchant Fulfilled, I can sell this book for $5 less. I can sell this book for 
if merchant fulfilled, if we fulfill it, I can sell it for $12. And you might say, why are you holding on to it then? And let me tell you, that's because we are in fact merchant fulfilling this book. Because when it comes right down to it, selling it for $17 on FBA, we're only going to make about $4.50, maybe $4.75 after everything is said and done. That is after the cost of purchase, your COA, your cost of acquisition. That is after the cost to ship it to Amazon, which in reality, Amazon gives you an amazing deal on shipping to them. When we send 30 books, it's usually between 30 and 40 pounds, and we pay anywhere between $8 to $11 total to ship all those books. So this would be about 60 cents to ship to Amazon, which is really good, except Amazon fees are gonna take the rest of that, leaving only about 475 profit. On the flip side, if we merchant fulfill this book for $5 less, we're gonna come out with about an, uh, I believe it was a $7.50 profit. So selling it for $5 less, we're gonna actually make about $3 more on the back end on the profit side. And this is why. With Merchant Fulfilled, your cost is simply a very small Amazon fee, which is gonna be maybe a dollar or two or less. You're gonna have shipping, which media mail, this book is gonna cost about $3.30 to ship, and of course our COA is $2. Meaning we are into this book, all in all, only about $5. So once the customer receives this book and the transaction is fully completed, we will profit about seven, seven and a half dollars on this book. Now, that is really what it comes down to. If you don't have the space, if you want it to, uh, let's see, if you want it to qualify for prime shipping, it depends on that FBA versus Merchant Fulfilled. Now, we will send a book into FBA if there is very slight price differences between FBA and MF. So if this book was selling for $15 Merchant Fulfilled and it was selling for $15.99 FBA, we would then send it to FBA. Because if you only have a $1 to $3 difference between FBA and Merchant Fulfilled, your chances of selling that book Merchant Fulfilled are actually pretty slim. Because if someone can pay a dollar or two more, they can get it from the Amazon warehouse, which makes people feel really secure in their purchase. And they also get prime eligible shipping, which means it gets the one day shipping that is worth a dollar or two more to them. So most people will buy the FBA copy. So the only reason we're merchant fulfilling this, which is interesting to say, is because there's a $5 difference. Someone is gonna be happy to pay me $12 for a used very good copy versus paying $17 for a used very good copy with those prime benefits. So if something is within a couple dollars, we will send it to FBA. Now it also has to do with the rank of the book. Granted, this is a 47 rank book, 46 rank book. It's gonna go fast, no matter if you're selling it FBA or FBM. It's gonna fly. At 46 rank, they probably sell about 80 to 100 of these copies a day. Now that's Merchant Fulfilled and FBA together. That listing or this listing probably sells right around 80 to 100 copies a day, which means no matter what we're fulfilling it by, if we only have the one copy, even if we had five or 10 copies, Merchant Fulfilled is really, really the way to go on something like this. Now, the one thing that's kind of out of the scope and is a little different, because you are coming across books, because you're going through yard sales, estate sales, library sales, uh, publisher remainder sales, you're going through uh, thrift stores, consignment shops, uh, or even maybe you put an ad on Facebook and you're going through personal books of someone's collection. There are books that you can still make a lot of money on that you can't sell on Amazon. And I don't mean you're restricted. There are some books that you will be restricted. If you scan a textbook that sells for $80 to $100 uh, on Amazon, but you're restricted, um, a lot of people or a lot of companies are doing this, like Pearson, McGraw-Hill, they're starting to restrict their textbooks. An $80 or $100 textbook on Amazon is still probably bare minimum $60, maybe $50 on eBay. And that's something you really don't want to rule out because while you're sorting through books, if you have profit potential of $50 on a book, but you just flip past it because you're restricted on Amazon, you literally just took a $50 bill 
and threw it to the side. You don't want to do that. You're already there. It's going to take you an extra two seconds to pick that book up, and it's going to take you an extra two minutes to snap a picture of the front, the back, sell similar on a listing, and post it on eBay. Now, I have a couple examples. This right here is the Pilgrim's, Proce uh, Pilgrim's Progress. Now, this is a 1916 book in fairly good condition. One thing that Amazon doesn't rule into effect or account for in a lot of situations is these old books. The, someone can buy a Pilgrim's Progress that was reprinted 10, 20 years ago for $10, $15 on Amazon. A lot of people, will gonna, they're going to see that listing, they're going to search Pilgrim's Progress, the listing with the most action or activity taken on it, or the most purchases or the most reviews is going to pop up first, they're going to see the book they want, they're going to buy it. Done. On eBay, people are sometimes searching for something more specific. So while this is a 7 million rank book on Amazon with a price of, I believe it was um, 70 or $80 on Amazon, but it's a 7 million rank, you might sell that if you sit on it for a year, maybe. However, on eBay, this book sells maybe one ev once every two or three months. So exponentially less time, and I can sell it for about $59.95. So again, it comes down to, do you have the space to sit on a book? Are you willing to sit on a book for a couple months? I paid a quarter for this book. This is another example that I picked up today. I paid a quarter for it. It's a 20 million rank on Amazon. You could sit on this book for two to three years, and you may never sell it. However, this book does sell about once every uh, 60 days, once every 45 to 60 days on eBay for $25. So this is 50 cents in books that I paid for that nobody wanted that I'm going to get 50 or $60 and 20 to $25 for just for waiting a couple months. And it's literally just going to take up that much space. So when it comes down to it, my friends, there's FBA, there's FBM, and there's eBay. There are some alternative sites that you can sell books on, and they do quite well, such as Mercari. Mercari is really an up-and-coming uh, selling platform. They launched a massive advertising campaign um, just this last year, so they're really starting to boom. If you haven't tried Mercari, I would definitely try Mercari. A lot of sellers that were, you know, 5, 10, 15 years on eBay have started Mercari accounts and they are actually seeing, hey, inventory that sat on eBay for maybe six months to a year is selling within a week or two on Mercari. So just another helpful tip there for you guys. If you guys have any questions about this video, if you guys have any questions in general, feel free to drop a comment or hit me up on Instagram at hustle underscore millennial. Uh, and I will do my best to get back to you. Usually I can get back to people within 24 to 48 hours. Um, normally doesn't go any longer than that. But I always want to make myself available to you guys to help out, answer questions, and really just fulfill the goal of this channel, which is, like I always say, either to get someone from a bad position into a better position or from a good position into an even better position. So uh, whether you are in the 9 to 5 um, struggle right now and you're trying to look for a way to either supplement your income or completely replace your income with something that you yourself are building or you are already a reseller you're part-time you're trying to go full-time or you're full-time and trying to get more ideas on how to further supplement your income that is what this channel is about so if you haven't already hit that subscribe button drop a thumbs up as the thumbs up there the like button down there first off it's going to turn a nice little color of blue and that's super ocd friendly but it's also going to show the youtube algorithm that this channel this video does have some benefit or something to offer people that are searching uh, for book reselling information on amazon so as always guys go out there kill it don't ever give up Always be learning, always be educating yourself, and go out there and just kill it, guys. I hope you all have an amazing weekend.